black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. It's the return of the Monkey Man. Uh, I know Phil's going to be coming on here shortly, and he's going to be sharing what happened to him and his sons back several years ago. And it's a very interesting account. And when, when you listen to Phil describe the animal's behavior and his sons talk to him about the behavior uh, of this creature, it makes me wonder if it was more or less just curiosity Uh, curious about the boys not necessarily looking to kill not necessarily looking to harm anyone uh, because most of the the creature's behavior is really watching uh, watching the 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 boys play i talked to a lot of parents before they actually see a creature on their property uh, there it's usually the kids that see it first and the kids will bring it to the parents attention and a lot of times parents just kind of brush it off like imagination which is common. You, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, that's what most people would do is just pass it off as uh, imagination, you know, great imagination. Uh, but in a lot of these situations, you know, I've said it in the past, some of the best uh, encounters, uh, witnesses I've spoken to have been little kids. Uh, and they'll tell you every little detail. They'll tell you about the sounds it made. They'll tell you about the way it ran. Honestly, some of the best witnesses I've ever spoken to were little kids. Uh, and they can really bring out the details. Maybe they don't hit the fear quite as much as adults. They lack that that fear. Uh, but a lot of kids, I'm telling you, they're some of the best witnesses. And tonight's no different. You know, I'll be having Phil on, and Phil's the dad. Uh, but he talks about what his kids saw that night. Remember, if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And I appreciate you guys being here tonight. Appreciate you guys listening. I know on Sunday, I'll be having uh, Tom Seawood on. And he kind of brought it to my attention. He's like, you know, Wes, I really think uh, diseases affect these creatures. Diseases we get. And he has a great argument for why he thinks that. You know, most of the Kakwakiwak tribe, hope I said that right, uh, that Tom's a part of was wiped out by smallpox. I think when him and I were talking the other night, he was talking about how there used to be 30, 40,000 tribal members. And then after 1921, there was only 1,200. And the interesting part is a lot of the tribal elders told Tom that these creatures can be affected by our diseases. Uh, He was talking about how the numbers, the, the native numbers went way down, almost completely wiped out in some of these areas. And reports went way down. Now, the argument I made was, well, obviously reports went down. There's no one to report it. Everyone's dying off. But it's interesting. You know, when you wipe out one predator, usually the other predator, Sasquatch in this case, would have a population explosion. And that didn't happen. So it's an interesting conversation. Also be inviting uh, researcher Jonathan Odom on the show. Uh, Jonathan is a great guy. I really enjoy some of his YouTube channel, some of his work that he does. And he'll be sharing with us his his own personal encounters. 
and and why he got into this. And it's interesting. Him and his dad uh, saw one of these creatures climb out of a river, get up, look at them, and walk off. A very, very interesting encounter. And, and Jonathan will be sharing some of the other encounters, too, as well. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. Phil, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here tonight. Hey, you're welcome. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me. No, I appreciate you being here. And if you would, I know you lived in a very remote uh, area, and your sons were telling you about seeing this monkey in the woods, uh, kind of a monkey man in the woods. Uh, do you mind starting and, and discussing what your kids say they were seeing, and then we'll kind of work up into your your encounter. Sure. Um, yeah, and at the time, I have to I have to say that it, it nothing was adding up because I'm hearing things from my sons, and I don't even, don't even know what to think about what they're saying. This this occurred about um, you know almost 18 years ago, and so um, they. Both my sons were very, spent a lot of time in the woods. Of course, our house is in the country and a big farmer's field behind our home and then otherwise woods around us. And and they liked being in the woods, you know, with me. And, and I, as I got older, I let them go on their own. And, and um, the very first thing I can remember being said by either one of them was um, my youngest son, who was eight, about eight at the time, uh, came home uh, really in a panic. And I could tell he was really frightened. And I asked him what what happened. And he said, he said I saw the monkey face. And I, and I, I said, what do you mean? You saw the monkey face? And, and, I, and I looked out back and I could see his bicycle was in the field. He, he would go out and ride around in the field. And, and he left it way out in the field by the woods, which was very unlike him. And uh, he, he said, I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, I saw the monkey face. And I guess this wasn't the first time, but on, but this time was very close to him. And he said, then it turned and it walked away into the woods and he could see it walking away. And I, I didn't know what to think of that. I mean, I, I said, was it a bear? I mean, we had bears in the area. And he he would recognize a bear, and he said, "No, it wasn't a bear." He said, "It looked like a monkey." And I said, "Okay." And then I thought, you know, he's eight years old. He's he's kind of imagining something here. You know, what what's he talking about? So I sent my other son out to get his bike, and he went out and he brought it back. And, and I said, "You see anything?" He said, "No, I didn't see anything." I said, "Okay." Anyway, so we just kind of let it go, and. uh but I remember he was literally terrified. You know, it was a quite a while before he calmed down, but he never changed his story. He never said anything different. If I was to ask him about it, he would say, yeah, it looked just like a monkey and it had brown hair, you know, on its head and, and on its chest. And, and so he, he didn't change it one time. And then the other son, the older one, had been telling me, he said, you know, while we're down in the woods, he said, I found a nest. That's what he called it was a nest. And they kept saying it was the homeless person's nest. And I I just don't, I don't think they had any other way to describe it. So I asked him a few questions about it. I, you know, of course, if there's a homeless person in the woods, I'm concerned, you know, for their safety and, and whatnot. And I said, you know, what are you seeing there? And they told me how far down into the woods it was. And I was very familiar with what they were talking about. And uh, it was it was quite a ways from the from the house and it was right near a swamp. He described it as being uh, large sticks stacked up together. And he said you could crawl in. There was like an entrance. You could crawl in and he paced out how large it was, which it seemed to me like it was about five feet by 12 feet. And then covered with branches and covered with leaves and and whatnot. And uh, but there was a lot of debris in there. From they said there was just a lot of torn up ground. And then they would also see what looked like some things taken out of a trash can, like bags and and whatnot, torn up. And they were all around on the ground. So that's why I think they thought it was a a homeless person. And uh, so that's what that's what I was hearing from them. Um, early on and didn't really, I didn't know what to think about it. I just, you know, the young, 